In the fast-paced world of today's marketplace, are you looking at your business and wondering, what will it take to get known and drive traffic? This is Your Business Matters Show, the place where your host, Kevin Yoon, shines the spotlight on industry leaders to discover the power of business matters, to share the insight that can positively impact your bottom line. Success is not about knowing your business matters. It is what you're doing with what you know. Turn up the sound and get ready for Your Business Matters Show. Here's your host, Kevin Hune. There's an old saying when it comes to business success, cash flow is king. Whether you are a novice or a seasoned business owner, the one thing you know is if there's no cash to draw from, there's not much life left in the company. Well, this episode, number 12, is all about what your business could do with liquid capital. Now, joining me to talk about this topic is my friend and financial whiz, Rick Nayor. Rick is a principal at Liquid Capital, an alternative business financing firm. He has an engineering degree and an MBA. Prior to Liquid Capital, Rick spent several years with Royal Bank of Canada, RBC. For those of you who don't know it, Canada's biggest bank in a variety of of uh, head office positions with finance and strategic uh, capacities. His passion is helping business owners grow and thrive. And he is here today to help you. Rick, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Glad to be here. So Rick, let's just kind of dive in. Is there really a right time to go looking for capital, you know, as a business owner? Like, is it, should I be at a certain stage to go, yeah, yeah, now I'm ready to be looking for capital? Um, the right time is probably when you need it. Sounds funny, but uh, every business is different. Uh, some businesses have, uh, you know, more capital uh, brought in uh, at the beginning of the life of the company when they first start. Some companies are, are, are uh, you know, cash starved from the very beginning. So the right time really is 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 kind of when you need it. So it's 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 kind of when you're running out or when you're planning. So for instance. Um, you know, a good, some good scenarios are your 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 business, and you have a uh, a large order that or an unexpected order, and you need to be able to fulfill it. Well, you know, in order to fulfill an order, whether you know be a product or whether it be a, a service, you will need uh you'll need you'll need capital, cash up front. Uh, yeah, you got to do you got almost like buy to get, right? Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it may be just for inventory, you know, to be able to fill the order. It may be, you know, you may be starting on a marketing initiative. Um, and, and, and you need capital to, to pay your marketing suppliers, be it, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, creating a new website or, or doing some sort of, uh, a, a market online, a marketing initiative or, 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 uh, or a, uh, you know, more typical, uh, marketing initiative. It could be to hire staff, you know, you're growing and you're hiring staff. Um, that's, that's, that's always the good, the good, the good news. The bad side is, well, you'll need capital to, you know, uh, uh meet your payroll <laughs> next week. Or you need capital to uh, pay back taxes. Um, you know, every business is different and every business runs into cash needs at different times. Now, you know, one of the things that I've found is that it's, I've seen companies and people who are in it that go for cash, they get, they're underfunded, like they underthink what they need. How do you determine how much is really needed when you're saying, hey, I'm going to come to you. Here I am, Rick, you know, you're liquid capital. I, I've got this product based type company and I think I need, you know, $100,000. What do you look at to go, is that really the right amount? Or do you just take the word of it from, you know, the owner going, well, he must have done his due diligence. Right. So um, it's interesting. Um, if we pull back a little bit and not necessarily talk about, you know, when they come to me, but in general, first, um, how, how does a business determine how much capital they need um, at any point in time? So, you know, there, there's a continuum from a very unsophisticated business person to super sophisticated corporations. So the unsophisticated uh, company will be, it really will be gut feel. Uh, it will be, oh, I need money for tomorrow. They haven't planned, done anything. And, 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 and they figure, oh, you know, I, 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 you know, I need this amount, which is a gut. On the other side of the spectrum, you'll have companies that do, you know, cash flow planning, business planning. They'll either do, you know, maybe in an annual cycle, they'll do a quarterly cycle, they'll do monthly cycles, some even do weekly cycles, and they'll forecast all their cash flows, they'll forecast all their sales, they know when their when they're when their uh you know uh, uh revenues are coming in, they know what expenses they have going out, some will be ongoing, some will be one time, and then you know, then they have a much better handle. So um 
it, it really depends. And, and then, of course, there's every, everybody in between. So, uh, you know, that, that's kind of why businesses typically um, uh, cash flow uh, forecast and find out what they need. Uh, so when, I, like as, to, I like to simplify. I'm going to cut you off for a second. I like to simplify yeah. things for people. What are some of the key kind of words, categories that are important when we talk about uh, cash for a company? You know, and I and I know there's a ton, like you know it inside out, but like for the average person, even if they've been in business a year and a half and they're hearing, you know, financial statements and they're going, oh, what's your balance? And some people are like, whoa, what is all those words? Can you like maybe define some of them? So as we talk about it today, people go, oh, okay, I get what he means when he talks about certain categories. Of of what? Sorry. Like, of, uh, like let's define like you know let's define cash flow versus maybe financial statement versus maybe balance and sheet. You know, like anything that's related to money for a company. So people go, okay, I, I'm getting it. I can see why it's so important, right? Sure. So cash flow is, as you say, it's king. Cash flow is typically it's cash. It really is. It's cash. It's how much how much you have in the bank, how much you you need. Um, it's not profit, right? We're not talking profit. Not talking profit. It's like strictly, you know, you take out your 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 uh, your wallet. It's like the equivalent of me taking out my wallet and counting how much cash I have, essentially. Um, uh, so th th that is really uh, what 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 cash flow is. Now, when we're talking about uh, a balance sheet, so so very typically, you know, financial statements have a balance sheet and an income statement. A balance sheet is a snapshot in time of what you owe and what you are owed, essentially. So it's uh, it's it's uh, you know anything that you, that you owe in terms of loans or or or, or uh, um, accounts okay. payable and anything that you are anything that that is owing to you so receivables etc. And the key um, is the snapshot, right, Rick? Like it's like if we did it on April thir April thirtieth, it yeah. doesn't mean that May thirtieth it's going to look the same thing. Like it's where we're exactly. at. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Now, an income statement is very different. An income statement, which is the other, which is the other key uh, item, a financial uh, statement, is a period in time. Typically, it'll be an annual, uh, on an annual basis. So, from let's say January 1st to December 31st, um, and it'll have your revenues and your expenses, and the difference is essentially your profit. So, your revenues essentially is what you sell. Your your uh, expenses are um, what goes into making that. Uh, sale. So, you know, it will be, if it's a product company, it'll be your inventory, it'll be all your overhead expenses, um, uh, et cetera, um, uh, your staff costs, et cetera. Now, when you have your your, your uh, revenues minus your expenses, essentially that's your profit. Profit would be before tax, and then there's tax, and there's profit after tax. All right. So, let's look at this now from a how do I know how much to ask for? Like here I come to you and now I'm a service-based company, right? And I go, you know, Rick, I really don't have any product or anything, but we're doing this massive marketing initiative, right? And I right. think we need about, you know, 50,000 to do this marketing initiative. What are some right. of the things that you need or what kind of questions we ask me to go, you know, to find out if 50,000 is that right amount? Right. That's a really good question. So um, in order to answer that, I have to tell you a little bit about Liquid Capital. Um, Liquid Capital is not a bank. It's not a, a typical bank where you go for uh, a loan, a term loan, or a operating line of credit, and you and you get it essentially. Um, we're a specialized financial institution and specialized dealing specialized products. One of our our main products is receivables financing. So we're receivable. Accounts receivable is typically when a, when a business deals with another business. They sell to them and they provide them credit terms. So 30-day terms, they'll have 30 days to pay. Uh, and 30 can turn into 45. 45 can turn into 60 really, really easily. Yep. Businesses can't wait that long. Um, and so what we do is we turn that 30 or 45-day invoice into one day. We essentially buy the invoice. We pay out our clients. And then we collect from our client's customer. So it essentially really, really accelerates the, the the cash flow, and you can use that to basically do whatever you need with that cash that you wouldn't have had had you had to wait the 30 or 45 days. So it's not a loan per se; it doesn't it doesn't appear as a loan on the balance sheet, but it's really acceleration of your existing uh, of your existing financials. So we will so 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 we won't provide a lump sum of money. Um, however, it acts as though it's very, very similar in that it acts as though it is a loan because you've got that cash 
that you wouldn't have ordinarily had at that point in time. So now you can use that to fulfill orders. You can use that to, um, to you know, do your marketing initiative that we had talked about before. Um, there's all sorts of things. And that's basically one of our, that's our core, our core product. It's not our only product, but it's our core product. So basically, in that sense, if we're looking for receivables financing, then the amount that you'll be able to have is, as you asked, what amount do I need? It's basically, it'll be basically the amount of receivables that you're expecting. Right. Okay. So what type of preparation do I need to do to say to you, okay, Rick, I, I know I need 50,000. Can you, like, I'm not just going to come to you and go, I need 50,000. What do I got to prepare? What do I got to make sure I have on my end to make sure you sure. go, yeah, you know what? This is viable. Sure. So um, that, that you know, it really depends on the uh, on, on the size of the loan because uh, you know you know on, on the receivables financing side, you know, we, we'll do stuff as small as ten thousand. We'll do as large as multi millions. So um, it really depends on the situation. Obviously, the larger the financing, the more in depth we have to go. Um, but essentially, the, the first the first item is a is a, a, a client application. We'll ask for client application. We'll ask for financial statements. And what we're really, really concerned with on the receivables financing side, so that product that we offer, one of the products is receivables financing, as we just spoke, is what are your receivables and who is who's owing to you? Because unlike a um, you know a typical bank, we are concerned with our, our clients and their financial capacity, but we're even more concerned with the ability of our clients' customers to repay because that is who is going to be repaying us. So let's say, for instance, you are a supplier of socks to Walmart. So, you know, your credit may be so-so, but of course, Walmart's is great. So when we know that Walmart is going to pay us, you know, we have a lot less concern than if, uh, you know, Joe's Corner Garage is going to, is going to be paying us. So right. um, the receivable, the, 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 the quality of who your who our clients' customers are are very important. Um, so, I mean, that's essentially the what we look at. And what's the short-term to long-term payback, Rick? Like, what's the problem? Like, <laughs> I, I mean, people might be listening now going, oh, man, like, I, like, are they expecting the money back in, like, 30 days? How do I get, you know, like, how do I get it back? Are there short-term versus, you know, long-term type of situations that you guys have created? Yeah, so typically um, what we do is, um, if you look at any one invoice or set of invoices, they'll be paid back anywhere from 30 to 60 to 90 days. But um, but that's not the length of our of you know of our relationship with our client. It's not 30 or 60 or 90 days because when a client comes to us, they'll need cash on an ongoing basis. So as they sell and as they deliver their product or their service, they provide us with the invoices and we finance them. So it's an ongoing rolling. Uh, process that could, you know, go anywhere from, you know, a few months to a few years, depending upon the, the, the needs of our of our clients. All right, let's get into some specifics. So you've got some really cool situations you've had over the years, different clients. Maybe describe, let's talk maybe about a product-based kind of a client, maybe a startup, and then somebody maybe a seasoned kind of service. So let's just kind of like pick one. So our listeners who, you know, they're, they're like, hey, you know what, I'm in this kind of bucket. I'm a yeah, I've been in business for a while, right. you know, been going. So right. maybe just share some cool stories that you guys have, where sure. you guys have made a real big difference. Sure. So um, from from a relatively small amount, from a product perspective, a smaller client, although he's not so small. Uh, we had a client, he's no longer with us. He, he graduated, so to speak, um, who was into uh, retrofitting uh, um, commercial lighting fixtures with LED bulbs. So he had some clients in the States, um, some retail outlets, uh, large kind of big box retail outlets. And um, so he uh, needed the funding to be able to purchase the product. In fact, where did we find him? We found him from his supplier. So his lighting supplier um, saw that he was getting into a little bit of, you know, paying slowly. They contacted us and said, you know, are you able to help this guy? Because if you help him, then it will be a, a help for me, for the supplier. So uh, so uh, that's kind of how we got into that. And, 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 the, and it was a good news story all around because our, 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 my, my client's supplier got paid quickly and, uh, and uh, my client was able to grow. So that's uh, kind of on the, on, the, on the product side. 
on the which is important which is important so just before we go service what's really important yep. for people to understand is if you if you and i we create i'll call it a market right here's our product well we got to yep. have the plastic to give this finished product to someone if i can't get that plastic i could have a million orders if i can't right. get that plastic like if i can't afford to buy the product my sales don't happen right because you, yep. you're not getting paid oh yeah here's your full payment like it's it's happening over time right i just want to make right. sure that, that i understand product. right that piece of plastic could be a finished product which you're selling, or it could be an input if they're a manufacturer into the final product. Right. And so you've got to have that cash flow to be able to go, I need to have this product to finish to finish my product. Yeah, exactly. Day, right? Cool. Exactly. All right. Let's go, uh, let's go start up, Rick. Let's talk about a startup. Yeah. No, I'm just yeah. getting going. I like I think I've got a pretty cool idea. Walk yeah. me through, maybe. So I had a, a, a client um, who was in the security services business. Um, his name was not Selwyn, who we both know. Um, but it was We've actually, been on this show, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true, too. So, no, he, he was out in Oshawa, and um, he was, it was really a one-man operation. Um, and um, he supplied – he basically was, was some co- subcontracted by some larger security firms. But he was a one-man guy. Um, but, um, you know, he came to me and, and, and he needed uh, cash flow to be able to continue operations and to be able to uh, service the, the, the larger security firms from which he was subcontracting. So, you know, I mean, it wasn't large amounts. It was probably like, uh, I don't know, I can't recall, maybe a couple of thousand dollars every week or two weeks, something like that. So we're not talking large numbers, but again, it was helping him as a really small solo entrepreneur uh to to, uh to 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 grow and to survive so what does he bring to you rick is as a like i'm a startup and i go man i don't have all those financial things that you know you had talked about a few minutes ago what what do i bring to you that goes okay let's make see if this is a viable you know uh, relationship that yeah so have. you know with him it was pretty pretty easy because it was a simple it was a it was, you know he if i recall correctly i don't even think he had real financial statements you know smaller companies don't necessarily have financial statements but, right. you know, we filled out an application. We looked at his personal credit also. We looked at his clients. His clients were good size uh, customers. And um, we, of course, have to verify that the, the invoices are good. We don't just rely on the fact that, you know, he brings me an invoice because anybody can print an invoice. So we do check with the client's customer to make sure they've got the goods or got the services uh, before we will fund. Um, so that's on that sense. Uh, you know, that that's typically what we do. Now, on the big end, um, we've seen... You know, over the and I and I know Liquid Capital has an opportunity to say, look, we've done millions of dollars deals. So, you know, if you're listening or watching this and you're going, I'm not a small guy, I'm a pretty seasoned, pretty big type of business. Rick, yeah. talk a little bit about where you guys kick in and really make a difference for some of these bigger size clients. So one that comes to mind is um a manufacturing firm in Hamilton who provided uh, input into uh, the steel making process, and they had just been bought out by a private equity firm. Um, but the private equity firm did not want to put in operating cash. They were they they invested uh, equity into the firm. They bought out the firm. They wanted to continue and to streamline it, but they didn't want to provide uh, operating capital. Um, their client, you know, they had a couple of big clients. We were funding one of their major clients, which was uh, U.S. Steel in the States, which is, you know, large, pretty large, large as you can get public company. And we were funding them, um, if, I correct, if I'm correct, uh, like I think three or four million dollars U.S. Uh, every probably three, four weeks or so. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, you know, it helped them until they were able to again this is a company that that uh, we actually expected that you know when they when they started with us um they said that uh you know oh we'll probably be with you uh you know for a couple of months <coughs> excuse me in the end it was more than a year um which was great wow. it was great for them it was great for us um it worked really well there was uh, you know everything was you know with a sophisticated company like that everything's on the web Everything's through portals. It was a lot uh, easier and more streamlined. But at the end of the day, we can help these large companies just like we can, you know, the, the smaller startup type companies. And what about those who like companies who are like looking, I, 
and that this happens sometimes. It's not mergers, acquisitions. Do you guys get involved where somebody's saying, look, I'm trying to buy somebody else out. Will you guys step in and go, here's where we can help out financially, or is it just not that for you? No, no, we don't We don't typically get involved in mergers and acquisitions per, per se. We don't provide capital for, for that type of a thing. Okay. Um, but we do and have then, a couple of other really cool products which we can help ongoing businesses, especially on the um, importation side. Talk so, about them. Um, so if, if, if a business is uh, looking to import, they're an importer, and it's, so they import goods typically from, from, uh, from Asia, um, which is where most of the importation comes uh, from these days, and um, distribute domestically, being it, let's say, in Canada, be it in the States. Um, so they need the funding to be able to pay their supplier. Um, so what we will do is we will pay the supplier and then the supplier would then be able to put the goods on the boat and ship it to uh, to North America. Um, and and that's, a, that's a big, big plus because businesses typically will start ramping up and they'll see that they've got, you know, large import orders. They don't have the funds to be able to get the product from Asia to, uh, to, to Canada or to the United States. Um, because not only is there, are there lead times to be able to manufacture the goods, but there's, there's, you know, it takes 30 days on the boat to get to, to land in Canada. So we can help on that end as well. So, Rick, when, when you talk to a client, are there some things that you have to, like, debunk some myths? Like, are there some beliefs that are out there? If you just go, yeah, you, you have the wrong information. That's not how it works. Like, are there some things when it comes to trying to get money for your business? Are there expectations? Are there things don't even bother asking? You know what I mean? Like, I need money for blank, and blank is that thing where you go, don't even bother. Like, you're not getting it for that? Um, well, I mean. <sighs> like, you had said staff, and off the top, you talked about staffing, you talked about yep. marketing, right? These are like some of the things. In other words, if I said I'm going to take my business and I want to start advertising, and I think, geez, I need a good $30,000 to start advertising. So I just come and go, look. I think it's thirty thousand dollars. We did our Facebook check, we did LinkedIn check, we did newspaper right. check, right? And right. we got prices, right. and that's what it's going to cost. Do right. you look and say, "Hold on a second, or do you go, "Yeah, you know, it makes sense." No, not really, um, because unlike a bank, um, on the receivables financing side, the goods the goods have already been sold, or the product has already been sold. There's a valid receivable out there. They want to get their funds in early so that they can do whatever they need to do with the funds. What we don't really are not we we don't really care honestly if they use it to buy goods if they buy it if they use it for for uh, marketing marketing initiatives if they use it to pay back taxes they can use it really for for uh, you know whatever they like um, and we don't have the 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 ability or the you know desire to see exactly what they're using it for we want to make sure that you know that they they have their funds in order to grow their business and be more profitable and that's where we partner with them how they choose to 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 spend their their funding is really you know based on on the company's uh desires and and needs now rick is it uh is it safe to say that some of these loans and the, and the money that you guys will put out there it's not paid back in 30, 40 days, but it might be a year and a half, two years, and there's continual payments, or are you guys really about just short term? Let's just get the money back in a short amount. We're of time. about revolving short term. So um, typically, you know, we, we don't let the uh, receivable go more than than, uh, than 90 days for the most part. Um, but we the, the great thing is we've got products to be able to help them on that risk side. So what I mean is, Let's say there is a receivable out there and it's not being paid. It's 90 days, it's, uh, it's, it's 95 days, it's 100 days, and their customer is not paying for whatever reason. They may be on the verge of bankruptcy. They may, they may have just ongoing cash issues on their own. So what we have, we have, we have a credit insurance product which we uh, supply to our, to our clients in the event of a credit default. So a credit default, as I mentioned, would be um, some financial issue that prevents my client's customers from paying. So that's huge. Um, that's huge. yeah, that, that's really, really big. It really, wow. really is. And in fact, we've actually saved the business 
um, uh, on one occasion. It was a really small client, um, and it was amount was a few thousand dollars, um, but it was a big customer for him. And the company went bankrupt. We made a credit uh, insurance claim, and he got his money back. And it, it really saved him. Otherwise, he would have been bankrupt as well. Well, and it's funny, that's a, a huge point. And I think anybody listening or watching this is really understands that as a small business, you, you have this great desire. And a lot of people are like, I want to grow, I want to grow. So you get yeah. this cool big partner, like this yeah. massive conglomerate. You're the small pot. And in this particular case, like you said, if something happens to that big partner, blockbuster, yeah. right? Great example. Yeah. They well, go exactly. under. You're sitting there going, but I thought we were taken care of. I thought we'd be okay. Right. And that's well, I mean, where look, look at GM in 2008. I mean, and you know, people, you know, smaller companies really got hit um, uh, uh, as a result of, of that. So, uh, you know, it's um, uh, it can happen yeah. to anybody. Yeah. 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 All right, Rick, let's wrap this up. What's the uh, easiest way to get a hold of you? People can find and learn more about, you know, what Liquid Capital was about, but more importantly, what they can do for their business. Sure. So I'm available. Uh, we're on the web. Uh, we're at l uh, www.lcsource.com. L C S O U R C E dot com. You can reach me by by phone 416-966-2206. Probably the best way. My email address is a little too long to to uh, to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to list right now. But those no are probably problem. two the two best ways. Awesome, Rick. This has been fantastic. Final words from you? Like, what would you say to people, uh, you know, thinking about, hey, I want to grow my business, but, and I'm thinking about cash, but I'm, you know, like, where do you go? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so really, I mean, a five minute phone call is all it takes for us to get going. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone and uh, to call us. Uh, I'm available a lot of the time, like uh, connected 24 seven. Um, and, you know, don't be shy to ask because it's just a conversation. Awesome. Rick, appreciate you being here today. Thanks so much for coming on and that, sharing that wealth of information. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you listening to another Your Business Matters show.